Well, hi, this is Dara. I'm a gender therapist in Colorado. Today's video is gonna be about something that I've been noticing a lot lately with my clients, and it's gonna to have to do with gender expression and gender identity exploration in regards to your hair. When I say your hair, I mean the hair on your head and also the hair on your body. Um, I've noticed that being able to experiment with your hair is something that can create a lot of relief. It can create a lot of self-awareness where you learn something about yourself by changing your hair. Again, either the hair on your head or hair on your body. So I wanna talk about a few ideas as to how you can do this. Now, one thing I wanna mention at first, as always, I know um, that some of you out there, some of these ideas aren't going to be able to work for you um, for a variety of reasons. It could be um, financially. It could be that you're in a situation where if you did any of these ideas, it might expose you in such a way that you're not ready to be exposed yet and those sorts of things. So um, definitely uh, keep in mind as I give you these ideas that some of these might not work for everybody and some of them might not work for you right now, but they might work for you in the future. So um, I'm gonna use myself as an example. So I got a new haircut and it's a lot shorter than I have had it ever. I think maybe when I was like a teenager at some point, I did a haircut like this, but it was like, ugh, it did not work at the time and um, it made me very uncomfortable. So it was kind of cool to be able to be a grown up and be able to finally say, I think I'm ready for this kind of haircut. I've been wanting a haircut like this for a long time. Um, I've had concerns that maybe it was not going to um, suit me, that it was gonna, I'd look in the mirror and be like, oh, that doesn't look like me. I also didn't know if it would be flattering for my face or for my body shape, but I finally got to the point where, um, well, first of all, I have a hairdresser who I trust a lot and I, um, found her uh, over a year ago and we've been gradually making my hair shorter and shorter and then finally I brought in a few pictures and I said I think it's time I want to try this and so for me um, some of you may have been following some of my videos where I've been talking about how I feel like I've definitely evolved to a point of feeling non-binary so for me having a haircut like this really continues to fine-tune my appearance the way I want to look in the way I think it makes sense for me to look. Um, in fact, the way I sometimes tell people is that I think if when I was a teenager, if I have, had known more about my gender identity uh, and be, was able to express it the way I wanted to, I would have already gotten a haircut like this. There was a lot I would have done differently, but I grew up in the 80s, so you know, that didn't happen. Um, so I'm sort of able to go back in time and do something different that I know really suits who I truly am um, so anyway, that's for me an example to share with you of how changing my hair over the past year and even eventually evolving into this haircut has been a really, I don't know, I can't express how much it's really been helpful to me to understand myself better and figure out more and more what makes sense for me um, as a person. And so um, I have, my suggestion is that if you can find a hairstylist who will work with you on finding the right haircut for you. And again, it could be over a period of time. It could be months, it could be a couple of years to get to that right place for you. That's really important. The way that my clients have found hairdressers is that, well, I tell them to go to my hairdresser because I know that she's trans friendly. They can go in right away and they can explain to her, you know, exactly what's going on. She will respect their pronouns or even if they're not ready yet to um, change their pronouns or their name, she'll know um, that they can talk to her about how they feel about that and she'll respect them. And uh, so if uh, I, I have other clients who have found through friends who have visited hairdressers who are trans friendly to be able to work with them on that. Um, so I think, you know, it, in this case, it's either if you have a local gay and lesbian center that you can look at their resources and see if they have somebody on that list that's helpful or if you have friends that can refer you to somebody or if you have a gender therapist maybe they have a reference list of people that they can send you to um if, depending on you know where you're at with things you know you i have a lot of clients who for instance 
um, have grown their hair out long because they felt like that for them would help them feminize a bit more. And then as they kind of progressed along um, with their transition, they realized long hair wasn't really for them. And they got like a shorter cut that they felt like really better reflected who they are. You never know where you might go when it comes to your hairstyle. So find somebody you can trust to work with on that. And look at pictures like on the internet, on Pinterest, on Instagram. Find pictures of people that you are like, I wonder if that hair would work for me that you can bring into that hairstylist. So now when it comes to your body hair, um, again, that's something that for, for some of you, may, you want less body hair or none. And for some of you, you want more body hair. So again, that's something that depending on where you're at with things, um, being able to achieve your goal on that, you'd be able to successfully make that happen and be able to see what that feels like. Oh, I forgot to mention hair on your face too. Obviously, that's a huge part of it as well. So let's go back to talking about your body hair real quick. So um, there's different ways that, let's say if you wanna have less body hair, you can start off by shaving. Um, whether it's your legs, it could be your arms if you want, it could be your chest, your back, um, any place that gives you discomfort when it comes to your body hair. Shave with your razor first and see how it feels. And again, I know this might not be something everybody can do um, just willy nilly right away because it might um, expose you in a certain way that you're not ready to be exposed yet. But if you're ready and you're able to, try to shave and if it feels like that's something that you really enjoy and you'd like to keep up, you could either keep shaving um, on your own. Oh yeah, and armpits too if you want to do that. Or you can also opt to do um, waxing or more permanent laser hair removal to help you with that as well. So again, I've, I've noticed that that is something body hair can cause a lot of issues for people who don't want to have body hair. Now, if you're going the other way and you wish you had more body hair, as far as I know, the only way you can achieve that is by starting hormone therapy, specifically testosterone therapy. Um, and so that is a way that you can develop, it depends on your genetics, um, but you can develop more uh, hair on your body for that. So there's really, that kind of is what it is. You'll take HRT, you'll start growing body hair, and then you'll know how that feels. Um, facial hair, obviously, that's something huge. Either some people want more facial hair or some people do not want facial hair. So one thing that some of my clients have strongly suggested to other people is that if you are, let's say you want less facial hair, that as soon as you can start trying to get that permanently removed, either through laser therapy or electrolysis, and um, you'll need to research and see which one's best for you. You know, there's a lot of different factors to take into consideration, but even though it can cost quite a bit, to do that, to be able to have your face the way you want it is going to end up um, being one of the biggest factors when it comes to you wanting to um, alleviate your discomfort and to have the appearance that you want to have. So again, that's for those of you who want less facial hair, trying to prioritize that, um, fitting it into your budget and finding someone to go to. And again, use the same resources I mentioned earlier to figure out who is the best person to go visit to help you with that. And then those of you who want more facial hair, again, testosterone therapy is going to end up um, producing that. Depends on your genetics, how quickly that might come in or in what, um, I don't know, thickness and what color. But uh, you can also apply some costuming um, to yourself, like goatees, beards, mustaches. Um, if, if you have, uh, if you can acquire different sorts of glues and costuming to do that, to see what it would look like. Um, but otherwise it would be the hormone therapy for that. So that will be it for this video. Thank you for watching. I wanted to mention real quick that the date my book, You and Your Gender Identity, A Guide to Discovery is coming out is June 17th. I'll keep you posted on that. And if you wanna sign up for my newsletter, I will um, send you a coupon code in June for you to get a discount on the book. You can sign up for my newsletter at darahoffmanfox.com slash newsletter. I remembered. Um, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.